How about it, guys? You see the title of the video? I am stoked. Super stoked. Um, wow, I don't even know really where to start. Um, here, I'll start with this. I don't have a video of the run, <laughs> so I did not think I was going to make this good of a pass this night. And uh, I guess just let me start from the beginning of the day. I'm sorry, this is going to be a whole talking video, but I, I put the, the slip up. This is what it is. I backed it up with another run, which I'll show you here, 1124, I think it was. But yeah, we put it down. I got, I got it up here in front of me. 1, 11, 18, 124.08. And there's still more to come. This weekend, hopefully I can get back out and beat it again. But so Saturday, we went to the drag strip. Only got two runs in. One sucks because I was shifting at 6,000. The first run I did was okay, but I accidentally hit the shifter panel. Like as I shifted in the, the car, it's first gear pull, shift in the second, and I accidentally hit uh, the, the thing again. You can see in the in the chart how it all dipped down real dumb. Um, so I knew I had a better time in it, but I figured I could do, like, because by looking at the dyno chart, I thought maybe shifting in 6,000 would net me a uh, better power band. Didn't work. Go to do up our third round um, pull. Someone oiled down the track, and they called it quits. Like, that's it. Go home. So on the way home, the GPS took me this awkward way home going through small towns and this and that well right before my house it takes me over this long bridge and i've never personally driven my vehicle over it uh the old lady and i have gone over that bridge numerous times to go to different places with the kid and food whatever so i'm like driving i'm like this bridge is so long i was like well let me throw it in because that's another thing i forgot to put the car in dynamic when i was at the track i left it in auto um you can see in this clip Auto mode is just like it changes the suspension based off the road that you're on and this and that. So I didn't even the throttle sensitivity wasn't up the whole way, which shouldn't really matter because you're watt the whole time anyway. But the suspension wasn't as stiff as it could have been, which helps a little bit on launch. And um, it doesn't open up the exhaust valves the whole way either. So that's um, taking away some power. So on the way home and I had, you know, shit in the car. My tires were aired up to like 35 or 37 PSI, whatever I normally cruise around on. Like, let me do a hill on this road. So I did it and I got like an 1154, I think. And I was like, oh my God, like just this little test run on this road real quick. I beat the time I beat the track and I was starting to think and I was like, well, if I drop my tire pressures, I didn't even think about, oh, I, I thought maybe if I drop my tire pressure, normally what I drop my tire pressures to is like around 30, 28 to 30. I don't ever go lower than 28 at autocross or on the street for drag racing ever in my life ever never thought i really needed to i didn't think it would make that big of a difference so i get home i'm talking to daniel shout out to daniel from dvv2 he was like dude go back out and drop your tire pressure to like 18 to 20. i said are you crazy i said that low and he's like dude that's what we do with these you know these radial tires we drop them down to like 18 and i was like you're crazy I want to go back out to this road anyway because I was heat soaked, like, heat soaked like a mother effort at the track That because the cars would get cold because it was three hours, two and a half hours between runs. Our cars would get cold sitting down in the parking lot so we were warming up our cars in the lane. I didn't realize how big of an effect that would take too. I figured if the intercooler is big enough it, it'll be able to get the, the intake temps down rather quickly. But I guess I didn't, I didn't think about it at all. I didn't cross my mind once until I was on my way home and the DA had dropped like I think it was near a thousand during the day at the track and then that night it got down to like negative 400 or 500 or so um and this weekend it should be down to like negative 2000 it's gonna be a pretty chilly weekend so anyway daniel told me to put my tires down low and to put some more e in the car um at that point i still had my back seats out which i weighed uh, the seats weighed 62 pounds and i put a little bit more e in the car so at this point to a half a tank of gas. I think I had like 2.25 gallons or two gallons or so. I don't know what the E, e content is. Well, definitely less than two and a half gallons so, that I put in. I don't remember because I put a little bit in um, before the track and then I put in, I filled up this actual E can right here and then I put in a little bit more uh, before I went out. But uh, So I did my first run um, later in the night after going back out to this bridge and I think it was anyway I, I the, the trans like didn't want to shift 
out of first, but it still beat my time. And then I went up, I laid on the launch control for a good, like, little bit longer than I normally do, and it cracked off this run, dude. And I, I thought it was lying, and I couldn't, there's no place to pull over. I was like, there's, I'm trying to, like, like, I'm nervous because I see lights way back, and I'm, like, trying to scroll on the draggy to see uh, what's going on. And I was like, there's no way. I was like, 11, 18, I went 24. And guys, mind you, this is with three, like a little over three and a half degrees of camber up front. I got two degrees of camber in the rear with like 0.7 degrees of toe out in the rear. If I put a drag alignment on this car, um, yeah, and less tire pressure and that pretty much that same like E content that I had, maybe even a little bit more, maybe we can like push the fuel system or the tune, because there's no tune changes. This is a 93 octane tune, so, um, yeah, I don't know how much E I can put in the car before it's, like, diminishing returns, but I intend to find out this weekend. But I think I can beat this. Like, this is a 176, 60 foot on the street. So, normally on the street, uh, my higher tire pressures, like, around 30, I was getting, like, a consistent 1.85, back to back to back to back to back. Um... And that was also on a bigger tire. I had a 245, now I have a 235. So it's a little bit um, not as tall and not as wide. And it took off two pounds per corner tire weight, um, which is where it matters the most. But um, I think on the 1150 whatever run, you can see that it was, I think it still was like a 1.8 something. Either way, a couple different things changed here and there. But uh, thanks to Daniel. Uh, <laughs> He got me to drop my tire pressures and pull a little bit more E in, and I went out and made that run. Now, um, oh, zero through four, I think they're doing like 11.31, and they're going to try and go back out this weekend and, and break it. There's a some car, I think, in um, Puerto Rico, ran 11.55 on Unitronic Stage 2, and Unitronic themselves on their Stage 1 Plus ran 11.64 or 1.19. So, as of all the big dogs, and yet, mind you, most of these people that have times out, they're companies. They have all this freaking money to do this shit. Endless R&D, endless time. Like, it's their job to be doing this stuff. I'm doing this stuff on the weekends between yard work and hanging out with the old lady and playing with my daughter and editing and work and working out and cooking and all this shit. So, for, like, the little guy like me to be able to get a time like this with nothing special, like, Racing Nine... Did not make it, it's not a special tune from Racing Nine. This is the same file we got on the diner the other weekend, and they're ecstatic. Like these guys, they are freaking happy. And they're posting this out today. This should be out from them at the same time. They're gonna post that same uh, picture. Also, speaking of the picture, shout out to Sean and It's Not Stock. Uh, he made this for me. He took the photo, he took the roller when he was down here, and he did this little overlay. Um, shout out to 034, 034, sorry. Um, they did something similar and I really liked it. So I was like, I have to copy that because I really, really liked it. So this is like a uh, paying homage to them because I really love 034. It's not a, a real like direct head to head, I hate you type competition or anything like that, really. I'm, I would I would love to share a data log with them to help them further their development, but I don't have a way to data log, so I can't do that. But now hopefully this pushes racing line to <clears throat> want to do like an E30 or full E85, which is what I'd rather do since uh, the fuel system can handle full E85 from the factory. So you know, that was a lot of rambling. I want to shout out again to Daniel for telling me to put that tire pressure down and for um, just everything that, especially that downpipe, uh, that downpipe is singing. I think that's like a big advantage that we have over all the other guys is they're um, using like three inch catted downpipes and this four inch catalyst is the move um yeah like went on my mark 7 which is i mean it's a different turbo yada 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 but on my mark 7 i'm going from a three inch cad to a four inch catalyst it netted me 300 rpm less to full boost and it's less weight and less i mean you can imagine when the turbo is singing up high how much better a, a turbo can flow without all that junk in the way um obviously shout out to race line for making a badass tune like I don't know what, how in the heck a little bit of E85 really upped it like that. Like, that's crazy. I don't know if the, like, the fuel, like, the ECU is able to, like, read that it's, I don't know. I have no idea. But it's awesome that putting in a little bit of E85 worked. But it's still on a 93 tune. And I did have my back seats out. I weighed them. They're 63 pounds. 
the Golf R is like 57 pounds lighter than the RS3 or the RS3, the S3. So it's pretty much makes them even weight. But I do have another person to shout out, Brookline. I'm have all the Brookline stuff, so that does probably she about like 20, 30 pounds, maybe like not even. I have it written down, but going off the top of my head, and like. It takes away some weight, then you add some weight back, and then the intercooler, do 88, again, keeping the intake temps nice and cool, but that um, that also adds weight back in the front. So, take some weight away here, add some weight there, you got lightweight wheels, but you got, you know, who knows what. And I had, like, just under half a tank of fuel, I think, when I went out and did these runs, so. There it is, 1118 at 124.08. It's my best ever 60 foot on the street with the DSG transmission. I've gotten like, I think one sixes in my manual, but that's like launching like 5,500 RPM, like 15 pounds of boost launching in that thing. And we haven't even been able to adjust launch boost on this. Like I, I probably should message Ben and see if he can up the boost on launch a little bit. Um, and I don't know if they'll do that because, you know, this is like an OTS tune, but maybe, maybe I can get them to maybe start making a custom file for me. I don't know. I'll let you guys know. Um, it'd be really cool if they could do that. You said that they're adding um, data logging into their, uh, you know, the computer program, but you won't even have to touch anything. You plug it in, hit the button, and you just go drive, and the data log will automatically start logging under certain loads and RPM and gear and whatever, so... That'll be coming, but I just, I don't know when. But, and then shout out UV2, shout out to Racing Line, Do88, Verk Line, uh, even 034. I have a slew of their parts on the car. Um, you guys know I love EQT. I got their grounding kit on the car. I got, uh, what else? I'm trying to think through all the mods. I like, like the 030, 034. Sorry, such a bad habit. Like I have their motor mount, their trans mount, and the Verk Line dog bone, really keeping everything together. And then, of course, all the Verk Line bushings, I got the front subframe, rear subframe, um, control arms, trailing arms, tow arms, um, I even, I still have some other, some other stuff I got to throw on from them when I need, when I go to do my alignment, and, uh, there's still more on the table without even adding power, I could do coilovers to shave a little bit of weight, and, uh, fix my alignment, and, um, it should be a little, I should be able to adjust it better for the rebound and everything for launching, That'll help a uh, lighter BBK. Hoping to get that stage three um, kit from Racing Line at some point with the two piece rotors. That'll shave, I think, 10 pounds a side. Um, the DBV2's intercooler, their big boy intercooler, 1000 horsepower CFS core intercooler. That shaves because it comes with a crash bar and that allegedly saves like damn near 20 pounds off the front end. So, now all these, um, I still have their intake to pick up. Hopefully soon it's at the shop getting Cerakote. So all these little things will add up and help with a better time. We're going to try and go out this weekend and I'll at least get some film for you guys. But the, I'm really hoping I can beat this by 100 just so I can like show you guys. And then I back this up with uh, 11. I went back around on the other side. The one side of the bridge kind of has a shitty road. And I think the launch ones wasn't as good because of that. But it was like 11.24 at something. So the car does it. And it freaking moves. It's like warp speed. Like, but lowering the tire pressure and getting it to launch like it does, I didn't realize how much I must have been spending because, like, the amount of torque it has in the low end, it is baller. It is crazy, especially with the nice, cool air. Anyway, shout out to all my people. It's not stop. Sean, everybody, Racing Line, Ben, Daniel, DVV2, 288, Berkline, Albert, um, everybody. Thank you. Uh, this is just the beginning. I'm telling you guys, I'm going to have a 10 second daily driver and, uh, seems like we're just right around the corner. Anyway, that's enough ranting for me. Uh, share this video to your friends, go to my Facebook page, Bryce Jordan Productions, find a post, share it. Let's talk about it. Um, your boy's stoked. And I've been holding on to the cigarettes since Saturday night and it's been eating me alive, but I didn't, I didn't I haven't had the time to make this video. Anyway, quit ranting. There's more to come. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you on the flip-flop.